Cause of Laughter Chapter 21 The famous lady escapes from the glamorous feast and escapes from the rain demon cave in the cold night but it was said that Helena's face was full of tears and she took the car back to Beijing. Joshua stood on the platform sadly and looked at the shadow of the train. He felt very uncomfortable. He stood there for a while, then left the station and took the bus home. When I got to the door, I paid my own fare to prevent my family from knowing about it. But everyone in my family knew about it. Jinji asked with a smile, Brother, why did you take a car to the train station alone to pick up Missy? We just received a letter from Mrs. Tao, saying that she was coming. You are so well informed. Shu wanted to deny it. But why go to the train station? I had to laugh. Since this weather, there is another worry in my heart that I can't let go of. However, Helena is on the opposite side of Jia Shu. At this time, she shed tears alone in the private room of the first class bus. As the bus passed Yankin, she suddenly stopped crying. I asked the waiter for a handkerchief to wipe my face, took out the powder box on my body, powdered myself again, went to the dining car, ordered a beer, and drank by myself while watching the scenery from the window. Except for a few foreigners in the dining car, there was only one middle-aged Chinese officer in military uniform. The officer was sitting opposite Helena. When he saw her, he seemed startled. After sitting there for a long time, he calmed down. Helena saw that he was wearing a yellow cloth uniform and an arm belt. His military cap was placed on the table, and his gold-rimmed cap band was bright yellow. He was clearly a senior officer. When looking at him here, he turned his head to look at the scenery outside the window. Helena smiled, waited for him to turn his head, then stood up and nodded to him. The officer was really surprised. He was stunned at first, and then nodded. Helena smiled and said, Your Excellency, aren't you Brigadier Shen? My surname is He. I once watched horse racing outside Zibian men and my father introduced me to it. The officer smiled and said, Ha, huh, by the way, I said it was strange. Good face. I am Shen Guaying. Your Majesty, Director He, has never been to Tianjin? Helena talked to him about family, friends, so she simply walked over by herself, sat down opposite Shen Guaying at the same table, and said with a smile, Brigadier Shen, just now I saw you looking a little surprised when you suddenly met me. Is it because I look like an acquaintance? Shen Guaying was exposed by her, and said with a smile, yes, but I can't tell where I will meet Miss He. Helena smiled and said, I also know that this acquaintance of yours is the wife of General Liu Dezhu. I have heard many people say that we have some similarities. Didn't Brigadier Shen have a good relationship with General Liu? After hearing this, Shen Guaying pondered for a while, and said with a smile, that doesn't matter. But his wife, I met once at a banquet. Liu Dezhu wanted to help us climb our family, but unexpectedly, the incident in Zishan happened two days later. I am engaged in the military, and am not in Beijing often. I don't know what is happening to the new lady now. Do you know Miss He? He Lena said. I don't know him. I really want to meet her. What kind of image do we have? Can Brigadier Shen introduce it to us? Shen Guaying pondered again, and said with a smile, Let's see the opportunity. He Lena now found a traveling companion, so she chatted with Shen Guaying non-stop about Beijing. When they got off the bus, they made an appointment to meet again. When he Lena got home, she made a phone call to Mrs. Tao and made an appointment to meet at the Beijing Hotel Dance Hall that evening. Mrs. Tao said, Didn't you go to Tianjin? And maybe you haven't danced for a long time. Why are you so happy today? He Lena smiled and said nothing, and just said we would talk about it when we met. At 10 o'clock that night, Mrs. Tao and Bohi came to the Beijing Hotel together. They saw Helena, with newly permed hair, makeup on her face, wearing a yellow silk dance dress with bare breasts and arms, and a large group of men and women sitting around. In the middle, when she saw Tao Bo and his wife, she stood up to greet them. Mrs. Tao took her hand, looked at her whole body, and said with a smile, She is so beautiful. What makes you so happy to dance again today? Just be happy. Why bother? Music was playing on the stage. Helena took Bohi's hand and said, Come, let's dance together today. As she said that, she held Bohi's hand with one hand and put her hand on Bohi's shoulder, making Bohi dance. After the dance, Bohi Xiao had to ask Helena why she was so happy. She expressed her impatience, and said, Am I born to be a melancholy person, and am I not allowed to have a happy day? Bohi knew something was wrong, but he couldn't guess what stimulated her, 
so he had no choice but not to ask. That evening, he Lena danced until 3 o'clock before going home. The next day, we were as happy as ever, dancing late into the night. After three days in a row, on the fourth day, she was nowhere to be seen on the dance floor. But on this day, Bohi and his wife received a letter from her personally. On Saturday night, a banquet will be held in the Western Alumni Association Hall, and a costume dance meeting will be held. And it was explained that a Russian band was used, with a pianist and a musician joining in. Bohi was surprised when he received this sudden invitation, and discussed with his wife, with Missy's qualifications, holding a dance party is nothing. But after she became friends with Jia Xu, Jia Xu was those who objected to her luxurious behavior would save money. Why did she change her attitude this time and hold such a grand banquet? This action was contrary to Jia Xu's opinion. Wouldn't it be against their marriage? Is there any obstacle? Mrs. Tao said, in my opinion, she must be so happy because her marriage is secure. But it's weird. Although she is happy, no one is allowed to ask her why she is happy. Said, you are this month old, so you have to bear some responsibility. Don't break the tied red silk just for the sake of her happiness for a few days. Of course, this banquet cannot stop her. It is best to have this after the banquet. It's better not to continue making trouble. Mrs. Tao said, there is always a reason for a person's sudden change of attitude. I don't think it's good to stop her and see what she causes. The end is here you can't keep it secret forever. Bo, he also felt that it was reasonable, so he ignored it. At 7 o'clock on Saturday night, Bohi and his wife went to the meeting. As soon as we arrived at the gate of the Western Alumni Association, we saw a large area of cars and horses stopped. Downstairs of the red lacquered gate, more than a dozen colorful lanterns were hung in a row. Under the colored light, pine branches and the national flag appeared. Bohi thought to himself, it's such a big fuss, even outside the gate is extravagant. After entering the gate, the courtyards and corridors are filled with colorful paper strips and lanterns. The hall was even more decorated with colorful flowers. The bandstand in the center is made of cypress branches and flowers to form a pair of large peacocks. The peacock's tail is open, and the screen is four or five feet wide. The dance floor spread out all the way under the stage. On the east and west sides, the screens and railings were tied with flowers. Colored paper was packed like raindrops and fell from the roof. Bohi looked at Mrs. Tao. Mrs. Tao smiled and nodded. He Lena wore a flag shirt embroidered with green silk on a white background. She stood at the door of the hall, illuminated by electric lights, and greeted the guests happily. There were her male and female waiters, who sent the guests to the lounge respectively. When Bohi saw He Lena, he smiled and said, Miss He, you are happy. He Lena smiled and said, everyone is happy. When Bohi was about to say the second sentence, she was greeting other guests again. When the uncle and his wife were resting in the lounge, they saw three long tables lined up in the east living room outside. Looking at the seat, it turned out to be around a hundred. There were a lot of men and women in the restrooms, and the voices were noisy. Naturally, there were many friends of uncle he and his wife, so they were busy socializing inside. After a while, I heard a bell ringing, and someone came to invite everyone to the table. According to the seats, there are pink silk strips on each table with the names of the guests written on them and placed on the table. Bohi and his wife sat down according to their seats, and saw that the table was full of male and female guests, all dressed in fragrant clothes and looking very lively. But everyone's face was a little surprised, and they probably didn't know why Helena was like this. At this time, Helena came out and sat on the host's table in the middle. She was no longer wearing the white green embroidered flag shirt she wore before. She had changed into a purple satin flag shirt with rhinestone braids. She was tightly covered with a blue tulle flowered, one word peepa style small shoulder strap. She is completely dressed up as a girl from the Hata family again. When everyone saw it, they applauded and welcome. Helena didn't sit down, but knocked the empty plate with her knife. When everyone was quiet, she smiled and said, I am honored that you are here today. But I am entertaining you all suddenly today. You must not understand the reason. I won't say it for now. I came out because I was afraid of hindering my business. I apologize to you now. But if I don't say it now, you will be in trouble. Let me tell you the truth. I have to say goodbye to many good friends for the time being. Where to go? I can't decide on this yet. And I can't comment on it. But what I can predict is that going there will be meaningful, and I will use it to read some books and cultivate my temperament. 
In the future, I may become a new person. As for whether the new person will be happier than I am now, or I may be very lonely. In short, I should be happy now. Be happy now. Don't waste your efforts to find the illusory happiness in the future. Let's all be happy, he said, raising a large glass of wine and inviting everyone. After everyone heard her words, some reluctantly applauded, but they were even more confused, especially Bohi and his wife and Brigadier Shen Guaying. By the way, since Brigadier Shen got to know Helena, he visited his house twice and the talks were very fruitful. He thought General Li was envious of marrying that lady, but unexpectedly, there was someone like her to be found. Moreover, his status and knowledge are better than Mrs. Liu's so this opportunity cannot be missed. Now, of course, it would be a little early to bring up the marriage issue, but in another week, there would be a possibility of proposal. While he was full of enthusiasm, the invitation to the banquet happened to arrive, so he also arrived at today's banquet. As if Helena also knew the reason for his visit, she fixed his seat close to the protagonist. When Brigadier Shen found his seat, he was extremely happy. Now, after hearing Helena's speech, he couldn't help but feel strange. But at the grand banquet, I didn't question people's reasons, so I had to take it to heart. Now that Helena had finished speaking, no one knew what kind of medicine she was selling in her gourd. He didn't continue his speech. Mrs. Tao stood up and said, Miss, his purpose is to have a happy day, so we guests should follow, Miss. He's lead and be happy in order to respond to the host's elegant wishes. Eat quickly, and go to dress up and dance after eating. We just want to have fun tonight. Don't worry about anything else, just to relieve people. Everyone heard this and applauded for a while. At this time, everyone was focusing all their attention on dressing up, and how could they care about eating or drinking? After hastily finishing the table, everyone rushed to the dressing room. In less than an hour, the dance floor was already crowded with people in shabby clothes. Some dressed as ghosts, some as ancients, some as foreigners, some as gods, and so on. Suddenly, music started playing, and small colorful paper flowers were floating in the sky like flying snow. Behind the east-facing pine branch screen, four little girls in ancient costumes, each between 14 and 15 years old, holding cloud-furnished palace fans, surrounded Helena. Helena wore a high bun headband, ancient palace clothes, and an eight-piece yellow satin dragon robe. She turned out to be a Chinese queen on the stage. The people present seemed to be going crazy, applauding and rushing forward. Several journalists brought camera boxes and took photos of her with magnesium lights in the venue. After taking pictures, everyone started dancing. He, Lena was not selective tonight. As long as a man nodded to her, she would go forward and dance with him. Seeing the man standing there waiting without a partner, she left her dancing partner and went to dance with that man. After dancing, I rested, then rested and danced again. For about an hour, I only suffered from Brigadier Shen. He wore full military uniform, never put on makeup, and didn't know how to dance. He just sat and watched. He Lena walked to sit next to him, and said with a smile, Commander Shen, why don't you dance? Shen Guang smiled and shook his head, saying that he was too young to learn. He Lena reached out and patted his shoulder, and said with a smile, Well, these days, if young people want to be fashionable, they must learn to dance. Since you are a dancer, just watch it. After saying that, she flicked her sleeves, smiled and turned behind the pine branch screen. After a while, Helena jumped out again. She is no longer the same as before. She has short hair, tied with a small wreath and two huge round earrings hanging from her ears. She has stripped off her upper body, except for an embroidered flat belly band loosely tied on her chest, which she wears again. A string of long beads, tied around the waist with a green silk skirt, the silk is about two feet long, sparsely extending downwards, with two bare legs and a pair of bare white feet, and she jumps to the dance floor, come in the middle. She had two bare arms and a pair of fragrant beads with green tassels hanging down. She looked charming in the Hawaiian attire. She raised her hands and shouted with a smile, everyone, I'm going to do a hula dance for you to enjoy. Some of the young ladies were the first to applaud, and even couldn't help but applaud. So everyone formed a circle, with Helena in the middle. On the music stage, the tune of hula dance was played, and Helena started to dance. This kind of hula dances from bottom to top, with the body forming a horizontal wave. The two arms follow the waves of the body, stretching up and down, left and right. 
the head and eyes also flow like this. I saw that the fake grass skirt, that silk knotted skirt, the beads hanging down to the chest, and the big hoops on both ears were all swaying. Under the appearance of a man dressed in pink and jade, with this appearance, it is certainly heart-wrenching. People who are accustomed to dancing will just give it up when they see it. Shen Guang looked at it, his eyes were stunned and he was speechless. After dancing for a while, he Lena raised her hand and the music stopped. She smiled and asked everyone, Are you happy? Everyone responded together, Happy, happy. He Lena raised her hands to her mouth several times, then threw them to people, doing the most fashionable and enthusiastic way. Then she held her straw skirt with both hands and squatted in front of everyone. She turned around and ran behind the pine branch screen. Everyone thought she was wearing makeup again, but she was still dancing in a chaotic manner, and the scene continued. Unexpectedly, once she entered, she never came out. When everyone went to the dressing room to look for her after an hour of commotion, she asked her two girlfriends to tell people that she was extremely tired and had to go home first. Please keep dancing. When everyone looked at the clock, it was already past two o'clock. Since the protagonist was gone, there was no need to linger, so they dispersed one after another. This night, Brigadier Shen Guang made a fuss, which seemed to be like a child's love and a hero's short temper. It seemed that the guests were in pairs and left side by side, but he returned to the brigade headquarters alone and dejectedly. The next day, he couldn't bear it anymore, so he obeyed Jian and went to He Lion's home to visit. It turns out that at this time, a huge undercurrent was brewing in the political situation. He Lion and Shen Guang were the main figures in it, and they met often. When Shen Guang came, He Lion met him in the living room. Shen Guang said with a smile, Last night, the young lady held such a grand banquet at the Western Alumni Association. It was really lively. This is the first time in my life that Wan Sheng came here to express my gratitude. A man who was a civilian official had a handsome military attaché. He claimed to be a late student in person, and no one could help but be moved. Moreover, Shen Guang's future was limitless, and he didn't dare to take it seriously. Then he smiled and said, Brother Tai, you are too polite. My child is really a bit European. It's just that the foolish couple are over 50 and they only have one child. As long as she doesn't behave too much, we have to leave it to her in terms of communication. As he spoke, he laughed, and turned back to the waiter. I went to invite the young lady. She said that Brigadier Shen wanted to thank her in person. The waiter said, the young lady got up early and went out at 9 o'clock. When she went out, she also brought, he picked up two small suitcases and seemed to be going to Tianjin. He Lion said, you should know from the driver. The waiter said, I didn't go out in my own car. When Shen Guang heard this, he remembered He Lina again. He said he wanted to go to a place where he wouldn't tell anyone, but now it seems that it has actually come true. Seeing He Lion's appearance, he was also very surprised. It seemed that he didn't know, so he said, since Miss He is not at home, I'll thank you another day. After saying that, he said goodbye and left. Three days passed since then, and no one knew where He Lina was. Even his parents only found a letter left in the house, saying that they wanted to avoid social interaction and leave Beijing temporarily. So everyone guessed that she took the Siberian railway train and went to Europe. Because she had already said that she wanted to travel to Europe. Then Shen Guang felt that Miss He was very affectionate, and did not mind the approach of men and women. She fell in love with her, and it turned out to be a dream. At this time, the current situation was becoming more and more tense day by day. Liu, the middle-class patrol envoy, suddenly accepted the petition of his generals and took the initiative to leave the field. At the same time, the government issued another investigation order. Because Brigadier Shen was instrumental in the incident, he was suddenly promoted to the command of the third town of the Patriotic Patriotic Army. The cabinet with Marshal Liu as his background was of course disbanded, and a non-Liu family member was found among the old cabinet members to act as chief minister. He Lian got his wish and was promoted to finance minister. The case of General Liu Zishen was naturally not worthy of attention, so it was cancelled. All the people who were summoned on suspicion were also released. Because the Liu family's property happened to be under the control of Shen for cleaning, Shen Guang stayed at General Liu's house and cleaned up his things in detail. One day, Shen Guang found a deposit account of Shen Fengxi and many photos in General Liu's bedroom. He was surprised. Could it be that the new lady had not taken these things, so she avoided them? 
Because he called the Liu family's old servant, he told Mrs. Liu not to be afraid. Although business matters are handled, of course, Mrs. Liu will take away Mrs. Liu's personal belongings. You can ask Mrs. Liu to come forward to contact you. The servant said, Mrs. Liu has not come back since she went to the hospital. For the first two days, General Liu sent someone to take care of her. Later, the general passed away in Zishan. There were two uncles of the former wife who took care of her. The two young nephews of the general took charge of the family affairs and did not recognize the new wife. Later, the situation changed, and the commander sent military police, and they also ran away. We have no news about Shen Guo. When Ying heard about it, he took a car in person and went to the hospital to visit her. I was afraid that it would be inconvenient for a man to visit a woman, so he said that Feng Shi was his sister. But people in the hospital said, Mrs. Liu was discharged from the hospital this morning because her savings were exhausted. After hearing this, Shen Guang said casually, It turns out that she has gone home. I didn't go home, so I didn't know. Covering it, I sighed deeply in my heart and had no choice but to forget it. Fortunately, he was burdened with military and national affairs, and he naturally forgot about them as time went by. However, a general's wife has suddenly disappeared which is something that the society should pay attention to. Moreover, the Liu brothers are also very unfortunate people in the current situation, so this incident is also a special issue in the newspapers. For publication, when the news reached Tianjin, Jia Xu saw it and became worried and happy at the same time. The worry was that Feng Shi would inevitably become a spring from the mountain for the second time, and who knew where she would end up in the future. Fortunately, there are no traces of the Zishan case, and I can go back to Beijing to go to school with peace of mind. At noon that day, Jia Xu, his aunt and sister's family were having dinner. Uncle Fan Duanben came into the house with a hat in his hand. He bowed to his aunt and said with a smile, Congratulations, congratulations. Madam, I made the announcement. As he said that, he put down his hat, divided it into three, on the left, right, and in the middle, and touched his beard. His hat was casually placed on an enamel rice bowl. When Mrs. Fan saw something was wrong, she quickly stood up, took it in her hand, and said with a smile, Published? Congratulations, congratulations. She also took the hat and bowed. Fan Duan Ben took the hat casually and put it on his head again. Mrs. Fan said, Are you going out again? You have worked too hard. Go after dinner. Fan Duan said, I'm not going out. I'll take a rest. I'm going to Beijing to see Mr. He in the afternoon. With that, he cupped his hands to Joshu and said, That's your Taishan. Mrs. Fan said, Why are you still wearing your hat if you're not leaving? Fan Duanben laughed, took off his hat, and put it away, or put it on the rice bowl. The aunt did not dare to speak in front of the wife. However, after hearing the news today, she was very happy. She just smiled, held the rice bowl in her hands, and only put a few grains of rice into her mouth for a long time. Only Jinji didn't understand it very well, so she asked, You said you published it. What did you publish? Mrs. Fan said, You kid is so careless. Your father has a new job. He is the supervisor of Kubeguin. He will be here soon. It's time to take office. This will make you a real lady. Jia Xu was watching from the sidelines thinking, Uncle and aunt were really enjoying themselves a little too much. But he didn't interrupt. He just finished the meal and said to Fan Duanben, now the school is officially in session. If uncle goes to Beijing, let's go together. Fan Duanben said, Great, maybe I can. I can use this to introduce you to the future Taishan. Jia Xu couldn't deny his uncle's words, so as not to ruin his official career and pack his bags. Wait until the afternoon and take the train north with Fan Duanben. Fortunately, my aunt, uncle, and sister are all happy and have no nostalgia. After arriving in Beijing, the uncle and nephew still lived in Tao Bohi's home. Bohi Yindwen was an elder, so he naturally entertained them attentively. Jia Xu didn't have time to say goodbye to Bohi and his wife, but he expected that the sentimental and troubled Mrs. Tao must have called Helena, and she would be here in less than two or three hours. But after waiting all night, there was no news. At noon the next day, Fan Duanben went out to socialize, and Jia Xu had dinner with Bohi and his wife. During the meal, as usual, there was some gossip. Jia Xu was sent by his uncle to talk about He Lion, and He Lion talked about He Lina, so he said, Don't miss He come often these days? Mrs. Tao snorted and agreed casually, 
still lowering her head to eat her food. Jia Xu asked, Why don't you come here more often? Mrs. Tao said, That's your freedom. Can I control it? Jia Xu hit a nail, smiled, and stopped asking. After talking about something else, he added, I received a letter from Miss He in Tianjin. Mrs. Tao pretended not to hear and just lowered her head to eat her meal. Bo, he gently tapped the back of her hand with the tip of his chopstick and said with a smile, You are so naughty. If someone wants to get some information from you, you should keep quiet. Mrs. Tao nodded and laughed. He said, Cousin, although you are cunning, you are only a first-rate figure in Lusu. How can you come to Kong Ming to offer advice? If you want to find out the news, just ask me. Why bother to be bored until now? You can't stand it either. Come on, let me tell you, he went abroad. Jia Xu said with a smile, Are you kidding me again? Mrs. Tao said, What am I kidding? Then he asked Helena to resume dancing. I talked about my old ways and the farewell banquet. Bohi said with a smile, She made a small splash in the social world with this costume dance. But it also cost a lot of money. I heard it cost two or three thousand. Jia Xu listened in silence. Bo, he said, you don't have to be upset. If she goes to Europe, she will have to ask for money from her family, so she will naturally get a letter. I will discuss it with my aunt and uncle, let you go abroad too, and catch up with her, right? Mrs. Tao said, men are all mean. They don't care about the possibility of getting close to other women. If a woman ignores him, she will die and get lovesick. Who told her that? She didn't take the initiative in the past? Jia Xu was wronged by these words, but he didn't dare to speak out in detail, which even led to the matter of the Guan and Shen families. This depression is even more uncomfortable than the obvious feeling of failure. Since this meal, Jia Xu has not dared to mention Miss He again. In the past few months, I have been dealing with three women. When I got close to one, I lost one. It was really unfortunate. As for Helena, it didn't matter at first, she was just passive. As for Guan Shugu, she has a good father and is a heroic woman herself, so there is no need to worry about her. Only this Shen Fangxi is a good flower that grew among thorns. He found her and cultivated her. As a result, she was ravaged, and now her life or death is uncertain. It is a pity and pitiful thing. Although she can't help me, I can only blame her for being too young and having a bad family. Moreover, Guan Shoufeng repeatedly taught me to rescue her before leaving. Could it be that she is still in Beijing? So I went to the hospital where she used to stay to ask. People in the hospital said, her brother Shen Tungzi came to pick her up and has been discharged from the hospital a long time ago. When Jia Xu heard this, he was very angry. I thought to myself, how could this woman be so spineless? What kind of brother is Shen Tungzi? Fortunately for her, Liu Dezu's family property changed owners along with it. Uncle Guan told me not to forget her. It would be a shame in life for such a person not to forget her. So he completely threw away things about women. After a few days of delay in Beijing, Fan Duanben was sent to the supervision when he arrived in Kubei, and he packed up his books and luggage and moved into the school. It turns out that his school, Chunming University, is in the northern suburbs of Beijing, more than 10 miles away from the city. As a student, you have to live on campus. In the past six months, Jia Xu spent a lot of money and suffered a lot, so he thought it would be better to leave the city. So, feel free to study in school. In this way, I don't feel that time passes easily. It's the end of autumn and the beginning of winter. Today is Sunday, because I often hear people say that the red leaves in Zishan are very beautiful. Just one person took care of the animals and came to the West Mountain. It is about four or five miles away from the school building. This pedestrian avenue is sunken into the ground, about a foot deep. Even though I was riding on the back of a donkey, I could only see the gardens on both sides and some treetops with fallen leaves. It turns out that the soil in the Northland is very loose, and all the people walking on the road are iron-clad two-wheeled carts. When the wheels run over each other, they create two big tracks. Over time, the road turns into a big ditch. As Jia Xu walked to the depths of the ditch, suddenly someone from the woods nearby shouted, Master Fan, Master Fan, take a step slowly, we have something to say. Jia Xu was wondering when four people ran out of the bushes and jumped from the slope into the ditch. The driver driving the donkey saw that they were menacing and shouted, and stopped the donkey. When Jia Xu looked at the four people, they were all wearing short clothes and rolled up sleeves. 
The two at the back had belts tied around their waists, and a knife was inserted diagonally into each belt. The two at the front, each holding a pistol in their hands, stood on the road and blocked the way. Looking at the slope again, there are two patrollers standing there. Jia Xu knew in his heart that this was what northerners call a road disaster. Because he had always been under the guidance of Guan Shoufeng, he knew that fear was useless. He quickly rolled off the donkey's back, cupped his hands to the four people in charge, and said, Brother is a student. He doesn't bring much money when he comes out to play. Whatever you want, just take it. Go. The first bandit, with a thin yellow face, but a beard and exposed teeth, laughed and said, We have been waiting for you for a long time. You are a student. When a man becomes a high official and opens a bank, what is missing is money. Also the amount of money is 10,000. Joshu said, You are wrong, that is my uncle. The gangster said, Whether it's your father or your uncle, you are the god of wealth anyway. Have to. Just give it a try. As he said, that, Jia Xu couldn't help but refuse. The two men moved forward, took his arms, and put them on the slope. Jia Xu was being held up, and he was panicking, but unexpectedly another gangster took out two pieces of plaster and stuck it on his eyes. As a result, the family tree fell into the dark world. Then something was carried, which seemed to be a door panel, carried on a wooden pole, but he asked Jia Xu to lie down and sleep on the door panel. Another quilt was used to cover him head and feet. They also said repeatedly, you are not allowed to speak. If you speak, you will be careful about your horoscope. Jia Xu knew that someone had kidnapped him. As long as his family was willing to pay, his life was probably not in danger. Now that things have come to this, we have no choice but to leave it to him. They carried them up and down, and walked about 20 or 30 miles before they stopped. A stranger's voice asked head on, are you coming? The answer was, coming. At this moment, they heard something strange. Hearing the sounds of livestock munching grass and chickens calling for food, it was clear that they were coming to a place where there were people. But there were very few people here, and I could only hear the sound of wind blowing through the treetops above me, making the trees rustle. It seems that this place is surrounded by trees, but there is a small house in the middle. It is naturally a peaceful place. After a commotion, they carried the family tree to a place where the air was very stuffy. Someone said, This is your room. You can lie down or sit down. It's up to you. After saying that, he walked out. I touched the family tree here, and there was a hard earthen king next to me. There was some messy grass on the king, and there was also a quilt on the grass, all piled up in disorder. There was a cool wind blowing behind the king. According to the rules of northerners, the bed is set up against the window, unlike southerners who have their bed facing the window. Jia Xu thought, maybe there is a window here too. Go forward, only two or three steps, and you will reach the earth wall. The door is on the right hand side, because I just heard the sound of the door closing when they went out. There is always a person guarding the door. From the rustling sound, it is obvious that a pile of sorghum straw has been placed near the door, and the person guarding it is lying on it. Jia Xu uses her ears instead of her eyes and her nose instead of her eyes to think about everything outside her body. At first I was very depressed, then I thought about it. There was no point in being depressed, so I just lay down on the cane calmly. Fortunately, the bandits provided a rich supply of food. Every meal included exquisite pasta, pork and eggs, as well as fragrant tea, which was available for drinking at any time. When he needs to relieve himself, there are gangsters who accompany him out of the room. During the first two days, although the place was guarded by a rotating guard, it was very quiet, and it seemed that there were not many people. Perhaps the bandits had gone out to get information. On the fourth day, the voices became noisy. They were relieved that there was no outside threat. So someone sitting on the Kang said to him, Master Fan, it is really unfair for us to invite you here. But we just want to raise some money from the mansion. We have no grudges against you. You can write us a letter to inform the mansion. What do you think? Joshu dared not disobey and had to obey. Then someone came and slowly peeled off the plaster on his face. Joshu's eyes suddenly opened up. Looking at this room, it was indeed similar to what he imagined. Two bandits stood at the door, each with a pistol in his pocket. In front of them was an old coffee table, a clay candlestick with a red candle, and a pen, inkstone, and letter paper and envelopes. It turned out that it was already night. The bandit, sitting on the edge of the kang, 
wore a pair of black crystal glasses and had two plasters on his face. Perhaps he was unwilling to show his true face. The man sat aside and told him, Please write a letter to Supervisor Fan. We want to borrow 100,000 yuans, and you are the middleman. If you are willing to lend, please ask him to send someone to the old land temple in Dasha village in the northern suburbs within half a month of receiving the letter to contact us. Only one person is allowed to come, and he must wear a black felt hat and dark crystal glasses as a mark. If you don't come, we will kill you. Do you understand the word kill you? As he said this, he showed his teeth and laughed. Joshu said softly, I know. But he felt that the word 100,000 was a bit too much. When he picked up the pen, he wanted to look up and explain. The bandit stood up, patted his shoulder with his hand, and shouted, Just write according to my words, and don't change it at all. If you change a word, you will add 1,000 yuans. Joshu did not dare to argue, so he had to write the letter to Bohi and ask Bohi to pass it on. After Joshu finished writing the letter and handed it to them, he put a plaster on his face. He did not know how to send the letter, so he had to eat and drink in the dark every day. He thought that he did not know when the letter would reach Bohi. Bohi did not know how to inform his uncle after receiving the letter. If he hesitated, the half-month work would be delayed. They gave a half-month deadline, just to send someone to contact, not to pay first. So it was better not to misunderstand this point. One person spent time thinking about it. Ten days passed in a blink of an eye, and Joshua gradually became familiar with the bandits and knew that the bandit leader, Lee Ergadin, was from outside the city. The person who came was from the suburbs of Beijing, but there was another insider, the one wearing black glasses. The two people who were guarding the place took turns, one was called Hu Guzi, the other was called Tang Delu. Judging from their accents, they were both experienced in this. Because they heard in Kubei that Fan Duanben was rich and had a son studying in the countryside of Beijing, they thought it was a good opportunity, so they came from afar. Joshu thought that they were deliberately plotting to make things difficult for me. Since I fell into their hands, they would not let me go easily, so I had to leave it to fate. One night, it was already very late at night, and suddenly there was a sound of footsteps running over from a distance, followed by a shout outside the house, and everyone in the house was awakened. Someone said, the fire broke out, damn it, gray leaves are coming. Joshu had been in the north for a long time, and he also knew their jargon a little. Gray leaves refer to soldiers. Could it be that the bandit suppressors have come? At this moment, there might be a glimmer of hope to escape. At this time, a man with a northwest accent in the next room said, How many are coming? About thirty. There are eight of us. One can handle four or five of them, and send them back to their grandmother's house. Guzi, the ticket is given to you. Let's do it. Hurry up and grab the weapon. It was Lee Urgadin who spoke, and who Guzi agreed. Then there were footsteps in the room. The sounds of testing the bolt, loading bullets, moving sorghum stalks, and moving wooden furniture. Lee Ergadin asked, Are you ready? Guzi, you watch the ticket. Everyone agreed again and rushed down. At this time, the lights in the inner and outer rooms were blown out. Joshua only heard those people go to the yard. Then bang, bang. There were a few gunshots in the distance. Joshua's heart was pounding at this time, and cold sweat was pouring out of his body. He couldn't bear it anymore. So he asked softly, Brother Hu. Before he finished his sentence, Hu Guzi shouted softly, Don't talk, get off the kang, and lie on the ground. Jia Xu was reminded by his words, and he crawled and rolled down the kang, and lay down under the edge of the kang. At this time, the sound of gunfire outside was continuous, and sometimes with a swish, a bullet was fired into the house. Some bandits in the house seemed to be dead, so the gunfire outside stopped. Less than halfway through the meal, there was a sudden crackling sound in the yard, and guns were fired randomly. Then Lee Ergadin cursed, Good boy, come over here again. Ha <laughs> ha, beat him, my friend, beat him up. Pa, 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 ouch, who? Brother Liu San was injured. Damn it, what beat him? Hit him from behind. Pa, 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 did he leave? My friend, stay calm. Swish, good boy, he hit my hat off. Joshua lay on the ground, only heard gunshots, curses, people running, and the yard was in chaos. He made up his mind that he was going to die anyway, and thought that there was no light in the house, so he did not ask Huguzi's consent, and quietly tore off the plaster on his face. 
When he secretly looked out, some starlight shone through the window, and he saw Huguzi lying on the Kang, only sticking his head out of the window to look out, and he saw nothing else. He only heard the intermittent sound of snapping and brushing in the sky outside the yard. It was tense for a while, and then calm for a while. After a while, a man came in and whispered to Huguzi, the wind is very strong, it will be difficult to deal with it at dawn. Let's rush out from the ditch behind. The one who spoke was Lee Ergadon. He stood on the Kang and pounced on the earthen wall twice. The wall shook, and a crack appeared immediately. He scratched it with his hands a few more times, and there was a big hole immediately. He used a wooden stick, picked up a piece of clothing, and stretched it out from the hole. Then he shrunk in and smiled softly, these bastards, just blocking the door. What are we waiting for, if we don't leave? Then he ran to the yard, cursing and shouting again, and then holding the gun tightly. Just at this time, two bandits came in, whispered a few words, and then climbed out of the hole. Huguzi touched Joshu's face and laughed. You are so good, you tore off the blindfold first. Climb through the hole and walk on the ground. Although Joshu felt it was dangerous to go out, he had no choice but to bravely climb out. Then Huguzi also came out. This was a small mound of earth. Huguzi stretched out his hand and pushed Joshua hard, and he rolled into a ditch. Then Huguzi also rolled down. Just as he rolled into the ditch, two bullets passed over his head. So the four people lying in the ditch were all dead, not moving or making any sound. Hearing the curses and gunshots in front of the house, they were no longer in the yard. It seemed that Lee Ergadon rushed out of the door. After lying in wait for a while, there was no movement. Joshua calmed down and looked up at the sky. It was full of stars. The wind blew the bare treetops, swaying and making noises under the starlight. The northwest wind brought sand and dust, which blew on the face like a sharp knife cutting people. There was a heated king in the house, so the night was not cold, but it was particularly uncomfortable at this time. The three bandits heard that there was a fierce fight in front of the house, so two of them were in front and one was in the back, sandwiching Joshua in the middle and teaching him to crawl forward on the ground like a snake. They walked and looked up, and walked about 30 or 40 feet away from the house. Huguzi told Joshu to stand up and bend over, and then ran away. They ran half a mile in one breath, and then sat down under a clump of trees. Hearing that there was an occasional shot in front, about an hour later, he suddenly heard footsteps in front, and Huguzi aimed his rifle and asked, Who? The other side replied that Ergadon was back. Huguzi put down his gun, and sure enough, Lee Ergadon and a bandit came. He panted and said, go up the mountain quickly before dawn. It's hard to get up to the mountain, this evening, and three brothers were injured. Another bandit saw Joshu and cursed, good boy, I almost lost my livelihood because of you. I'll risk it all to destroy you. As he said that, he took out a pistol and pointed it at Joshu's forehead, followed by a click. Joshu must have been killed by this shot. He will tell you next time. All right, this part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.